On this episode of Flying Like Iron Man, we're going to be testing the arm thrusters and the jet boots. In three, two, one. They are calling him the Tony Stark of Kitchener, Ontario. Since the last flight update, we've redesigned the arm thrusters. First, we put on larger ESCs, because as you know, in the last update, it caught fire. Crap, crap, crap. Second, we've actually removed the batteries from the arm, which gives me a lot more flexibility and mobility while using the system, which means we're going to have to relocate the batteries. So what we're doing is we're actually using a tactical vest. And what we found is med packs are just the right size to fit four batteries in. These med pack pouches are just big enough to hold four of our battery packs from Hobby King. There are links in the description below. This allows us to run a bunch of batteries in parallel to account for the huge amounts of current the system will draw. Plus, it's modular, so we can mount more and more batteries as the system continues to evolve. At least when I'm going to fly, I'm not going to have to go through airport security. This might be a bit suspicious. Next up, we finished the jet boots. We're using a pair of motorcycle boots and a bunch of 3D printed parts that we designed plus a really beefy 250 amp speed controller. Now we keep calling these jet boots, uh, but really they're EDF boots, but personally I don't think EDF boot really has the same ring to it as jet boot, so that's what we're going to call them for now. These EDFs also produce 8 kilograms of thrust each. In case you're wondering why this project is taking so long, the biggest issue is funding. If you haven't guessed by now, this is a really expensive project, and while Hobby King has been great to us providing many of these parts for free, We've also invested a few thousand dollars of our own money into this project, and the problem with any kind of R&D is there are tons of unforeseen costs that you don't know about until they happen. Remember, ESCs and EDFs are precision parts, and we're not exactly using these as the manufacturer recommended. For the most part, ESCs are air-cooled because of the high speeds that RC planes fly at. Since we're just hovering, there is no air cooling. In addition to the lack of cooling, we're also pushing these components to their limits, which means it's very important for us to oversize the speed controllers for the fans. It's important to note that the rated current of, a, say, an EDF motor might be listed on the spec sheet as, say, I don't know, 150 amps. That doesn't take into account the possible peak current. So if you're spinning up one of these fans at high speeds, it's actually possible to draw even more current, a couple hundred amps, which can very quickly fry some components. In fact, we've got our own little graveyard of parts that we have unfortunately destroyed during testing. This represents around $2,000 worth of components that we can't really fix and are basically just a lost cost. But that's part of R&D. You always have these unforeseen costs and you never know if a component is going to work or not until you test it. On the bright side, we're quickly becoming experts at using these EDFs and ESCs and sizing the components properly in order to use them for our application, which is only going to help the project in the long run. Unfortunately, the next phase of the project is going to be even more expensive, and that's not including little mess-ups like this where we fry some speed controllers. These are the largest EDFs that Hobby King can provide us with. As you can see, the maximum thrust output is 8 kilograms for a 120 mil diameter EDF. Now unfortunately, that means we need about 20 of these in order to counterweight all the batteries, wires, 3D print parts, and my weight in order to fly. Now, if you increase the size of the EDF, the efficiency goes way up. In fact, an EDF that's only a few inches bigger can produce three to four times as much thrust. Now that's awesome, but where do we get those big EDFs? Well, unfortunately, it's a niche market, which means the larger EDFs are very, very expensive. The larger EDFs can cost upwards of $4,000 each, which means we're going to need some serious funding if we want to get this project off the ground. Now, we're going to be continuing to look for more sponsors for the project, but we're also thinking about starting a GoFundMe campaign so you guys can help support the project. If you're interested in us doing that, please let us know in the comments, and we might set that up soon. Anyway, enough about that. Let's test the system. Okay. 
Well, out of all the stupid things we've done, I think this takes the cake. I like to think that all the alternate versions of me in alternate universes are probably dead because of all the times I was just really lucky and didn't kill myself, and I'm, I'm the only one left. All right, so I've got all the flight system components attached to my body now. Uh, it's a little bit sketchy. There's a lot of wires going everywhere, but this is just a prototype, so we can uh, ignore some blatant safety concerns that are obviously present right now. All right, so in the last flight test, we had about 125 pounds of counterweights using the stunt wire system. This time, we only have 95 pounds. Now, because we have both the jet boots and the arm thrusters, and we've upgraded the arm thruster EDFs as well, we should be able to fly with assistance from the stunt wire system. All right, so we're gonna do a quick system test to make sure all the turbines spin up at the same time. Uh, we're running everything in parallel, which means we just have one throttle right now. So, let's see if everything turns on. All right. All right, there seems to be a slight offset between uh, one each one turns on. No idea why, but should be fine. Uh, earmuffs, please. Alright, so that was pretty awesome. Obviously, we still have quite a ways to go before we're going to be able to fly without the stunt wire system. But on the plus side, we didn't break anything during that test, which is definitely a positive for our project. Now, in the next video, we're going to be doing some not so safe safety tests to make sure I'm a bit more protected in future tests. This includes blowing up some batteries to see just how flammable and possibly explosive they are. Um, shattering some EDF blades when they're at full speed, 40,000 RPM, just to see, is that gonna like cut me open or not? And finally, we're also gonna try manufacturing our own EDFs by using 3D printing, because I know a bunch of you guys have actually asked, is that possible? And while we don't really think it is going to work, we're gonna do our best and see what we can do. We're also currently working on designing the jetpack to add to the system. 
We're going to use the EDFs we have right now, but we're going to have the design open so that we can upgrade in the future to the bigger EDFs once we can afford those. Now speaking of EDFs, we just wanted to give another big thank you to Hobby King for supplying us with so many parts. And we just wanted to let you guys know that Hobby King sells more than just EDFs and batteries and speed controllers. They also sell all kinds of remote controlled hobbyist uh, toys and equipment, including this super tiny quadcopter. And this is about $13, I think. Plus, you can get an FPV module on top. Take a look. I've owned lots of these mini drones before, and I must say the Blue Wren is one of the most robust mini drones I've ever flown. We've crashed it probably well over 20 times and have yet to break anything. And it's pretty powerful too. As you can see, you can even mount a small FPV module on top to allow you to do FPV racing. If you're interested in checking this drone out, you can click the links in the description below.